Today is Friday, October 28, 2019. I'm Ethan Wolfstelter. A secret space mission has ended and we've got the details. And I'm Andrew Metcalf. LeBron James had to evacuate his home. The news is next. Congratulations to the Marching Wildcats who took first in, D in performance at D3 this weekend, as well as best general effect and best visual performance. Drumline took second and Color Guard took third in their categories. This is no small accomplishment. Well done, Wildcats. Winter is on the way and low temperatures here in the valley should reach the teens by midweek. That means winter is on the way and winter means snow and snow means snow team. If you are interested in joining Columbia's snow team, there is an informational meeting tomorrow during lunch in Ms. Sinovsky's room in A162. Ladies, are you interested in playing basketball? If so, open gyms are Monday and Wednesday, 5.30 to 7, and tryouts are November, November 4th and 5th, right after school. Take a chance and check out Lady Wildcat Hoops. It's Monday, and that means it's time for What About You, where today we learn about Mr. Diplock. Did you know he was an L.A. County deputy? Also this week, we're adding Get Your Fill, which is a candid conversation with Mr. Diplock about important school issues like what's appropriate to wear on Halloween. Get ready for a fantastic journey into the mind of Mr. Diplock. Roll tape. Who was your favorite teacher in high school? Oh, my favorite teacher in high school, his name was Mr. Stockton. Um, he was my, what was he, my history teacher, but he always treated us like one of his things he used to say, okay, you scholar. He used to call me a scholar, which made me feel like smart. Yeah, and he just talked to you, talked to you all the time and asked how you were and got to know you and yeah, he was my favorite teacher. What sports did you play in high school, if any? Yep, I played uh, football my freshman year and then I played baseball all four years. What was your first date? My first date? The sophomore year, I went out with a girl and we went to a yogurt place. What's the worst date you've ever been on? Um, worst date? Probably the first one with my, my current wife of 29 years. He kind of asked me to go out and guess what I didn't have any money because I was just working at a little store and going to school and yeah so I didn't I had to tell her um, I don't have any money but that was the worst part of it everything else was good what was your favorite memory of high school <sighs> um, probably sports and baseball my senior year uh, we won our conference and it was the first time in like 14 years at our high school that we that baseball had won the conference so that was a big deal thank you for your time awesome. okay thank you thanks for having me all right Hey, well, Mr. Diplock, yeah. thank you for agreeing to be interviewed today. Oh, We're back again. <laughs> so today we have some questions for you about Halloween. Okay. So what can students wear? What can they wear? So students can wear uh, a costume. Like, uh, obviously it has to be school appropriate. Um, and then the one thing we don't want is full face paint, okay? For obvious reasons, we have to be able to identify kids and know who you are. Um, so if you want to wear, say, for example, uh, you were dressing up as Braveheart and you wanted to wear half of your face with some of the blue and the white paint, you can do that. As long as your face is not fully covered, um, that, that's okay. And I think the big thing is when you hear this, or and hopefully people hear it sooner than later, is that they ask. Um, ask us what's, what's appropriate or what they can wear. So does that rule about face paint apply similarly to things like masks? Yes, masks too. We don't want we don't want anything that's covering the majority of your face, which could be like a bandana or some kind of a scarf or or a full full mask of any type. Um, yeah, or you know ski masks or ski or beanies that have the eyes cut out, whatever you call them. But yeah, anything that we can't tell who somebody is, that's what we don't. That's what we don't have. Again, questions or if you're not sure, it's probably if if you're wondering, oh maybe I shouldn't wear this, then ask somebody that works here, right? Um, that's a smart thing to do. Yeah. Uh, what about props? I know some Halloween costumes come with extras, so what, what's the school stance on that? Right. Um, again, anything that's a simulation or a prop of a weapon, we don't, we don't want them on campus, right, for obvious reasons that somebody might mistake that for it being real. Um, we've had times in where people have dressed up as a character from Star Wars, right, so they have the lightsabers and stuff like that. I, again, I think it's just using the judgment, which we have because we're high school students and we're not in middle school or elementary, knowing that oh, this probably isn't, isn't good. So anything that's with weapon-wise, 
We don't, we don't want to be carrying those on campus. And then the usual dress code kind of style intervention would happen as well if a student were to be wearing something that exposed their shoulders. Right, right. yep. We would have our security staff or myself just asking or talking to somebody like we always do. We talk to students and just making sure that we're clear on what we can have and what we can't. And then if it's a change of clothing or calling home, then that's what we would do. So Halloween is just one day. Yeah. Are there any other things you're noticing around the school as of late that we as a student body need to be working on? Yeah, I mean, I think we, we always talk, there's a couple things that come to mind. Uh, the first right now is because we've had the big shift in our in wearing our ID cards, right, and our lanyards, um, is continuing to do that. It ha it's a change, right? At Columbia High School, we've never done it, so it's the first year. So um, I think it's like anything else. We're good for a little bit of, you know, a little while, and then we get kind of lazy with it, right? Um, again, the importance of it, more than anything, is for the safety and security of you guys, right? The students, right, and your teachers. And so we know who shouldn't be on campus. Um, and then for other reasons, just being proud to have a Columbia something on you. That's, that's you know, my whole point of getting those to begin with. Um, but again, um, doing that, having it exposed, and I've had this question come up, so this is a good time to discuss it. Can we have it clipped on our bag? Yes, you can. Can you have it, can you just have a clip with your ID card? Sure, if you don't like wearing the lanyard, you're uncomfortable having something around your neck all the time. Yeah, you can do, there's several ways to do it. And again, it's one of those things where we're getting to the point, and I think people need to know this because we've been doing it, where we're going to bring kids in and then we're going to call your parents with you and explain to them that you aren't wearing your ID card. Um, so it's just getting better as a group and, again, just encouraging peers to talk to the peers, like, hey, where's your ID, right? Um, and I, that's a big thing that we try to do at the school because you guys as students um, have a lot more impact on each other than I think any adult does. Besides lanyards, is there anything else pressing that you think is worthy of discussion? Yeah. I think it's always pressing in terms of, and we really do honestly do a good job here for the most part, you guys do, uh, of keeping the campus clean, taking pride in, in picking up your trash in the morning after you have your breakfast. If you happen to walk by and you see something on the ground, pick it up and throw it away, right? Um, just the things that Mr. Wilson here, myself, all the rest of us do, we see it, we don't just walk by it, we throw it away to keep this place clean. Uh, Mr. Warner and his crew from ABM work very hard to make Columbia a nice school. Um, when you walk in here that it's clean and um, just a, a healthy environment to be in. So, the most important thing we need to learn, Halloween costumes can't cover your face. Right. But when you do wear your Halloween costume, you better have your lanyard on while you're doing it. There you go. So we know who you are. And have fun with it. I mean, I, I honestly encourage people to wear a costume in school. Halloween's a, a cool time of the year. and um, Yeah, so. Uh, well, thank you for being here today and allowing us to ask you questions. You know what I like about that guy? I like his haircut. Looks good. By the way, thanks, Dr. Keller, for all the good stuff you do for us. And, whoa, I felt like I just went out of focus. Well, maybe not. I, I got to watch what I'm eating for breakfast. Okay, today's high is 46, and the low is 20, 21. Okay, tomorrow, high is 38. Now, the low, so you know, the low isn't low enough to freeze a toad in the mud. So if you're toad hunting, take a shovel. Back to you guys. Thanks, Willard. After a record-breaking 780 days circling the Earth, the U.S. Air Force's mysterious X-37B unmanned space plane dropped out of orbit and landed safely on the same runway that the space shuttle once used. It was the fifth acknowledged mission for the vehicle built by Boeing at the aerospace company's Phantom Works. As in previous missions, many of the details about the vehicle's activities in the past two years are being kept under wraps. One experiment was to test experimental electronics and oscillating heat pipe technologies in the long duration space environment, according to the Air Force statement. Early this morning, Los Angeles Lakers star LeBron James tweeted that he and his family had to evacuate their house due to the wildfires that are blazing throughout California. Early Monday, a brush fire broke out along the west side of Interstate 405 in Los Angeles, north of Sunset Boulevard and near the Getty Center. As of 5.30 a.m., the fire was moving westward and had grown to more than 400 acres, with approximately 3,300 homes under mandatory evacuation orders. The Los Angeles Fire Department called the fire a very dynamic situation due to high winds from the 15 to 20 miles an hour, and that approximately 500 firefighters are fighting the blaze. The SAT word of the day is ambivalence, which means indecision. You could use it like this. Looking at the bowl of candy, Williams showed his ambivalence by saying, I can't decide, just give me one. That's the news. Thanks for watching, and remember, live, live the wildcat way. way.